We're given a rather complicated looking equation that designates a curve. Then we're going to be asked to find dy dx, to find a given tangent line, a specific tangent line, and finally a particular point on the curve. So we first recognize that the equation is complex enough that it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to separate out y. And therefore we're going to need to use implicit differentiation. And then when we find the tangent lines and the points on the curve, we're going to be given constraints that will simplify the equations we have. And that's our general approach to solving these problems. So part A we're going to use, as I said, implicit differentiation to get dy dx. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We've got 6y squared dy dx. Now we'll have to use the product rule on this one. So I'm going to pull out the 6. And then I get the derivative of the first 2xy plus the derivative of the second dy dx x squared. Now I have minus 24x plus 6 dy dx equals 0. These are complex enough. It is worth going back and double checking to make sure that you handle each term properly before you go on. What's nice here is that we have a 6 that can be factored out of every term in the equation. If we take a 6 out of everything, this becomes a 4. And so our equation is a little bit more manageable. Now we're going to collect all the dy dx terms. So we have dy dx. And it's multiplied by y squared plus x squared plus 1. That handles the 3 dy dx terms. And then let's bring out the remaining two terms. We've got plus 2xy minus 4x. Now the terms that don't have dy dx in them we move to the other side and then we divide both sides by the term that is multiplying the dy dx. When we do both of those steps together, this keeps our computation fairly clean. We're going to have a 4x minus 2xy all over y squared plus x squared plus 1. It's good to do it in just the three steps so that the less explicit calculations you do, the fewer chances you have to make a mistake. Now in this case, they give us the result that we're looking for. So we can be quite confident that we've done this part of the problem correctly. Part B asks for equations of horizontal tangent lines. Well, let's just recall that horizontal tangent line corresponds to the constraint that dy dx is zero. Okay. Um, we first want to make sure that the denominator uh, cannot be zero, or at least understand when it is. In this case, because we have a positive quantity, another positive quantity, and one, the denominator can never be zero. So let's just say that um, because the denominator can't be zero. Okay. 
dy dx equals zero corresponds solely to uh, the numerator equal to zero. If the denominator could be zero, we would have to deal with whatever indeterminate case. But that's not an issue here. So now we're just going to set the numerator to zero. 4x minus 2xy equals zero. And we can factor that so we get 2x times 2 minus y equals zero. So either x is zero or, or y is two. Or both. Either x is zero. Okay. Let's first look at the case when x is zero. I'm going all the way back to the original equation and putting in zero for x wherever I see it. I get 2y cubed, the next term goes away, the next term goes away, plus 6y equals 1. And because this is uh, cubic and I don't see any immediately uh, quick and easy way to handle this, I'm going to use the calculator to solve for that y value. So what I've done is I've put in the equation using x as my variable and then I'm just going to find when this y1 equation intersects the y2 equation. So let's just find the intersection of this equation. Okay, Those are my two curves. There's my guess. And the answer is 0 0.1652. So what I have is y equals 0 0.1652. Now ordinarily we'd be doing more here, namely we'd be we'd find the slope, we'd use the point slope form to write out the equation for the tangent line. But because it's a horizontal line, the equation is simply y equals the given value. So that's the whole equation, y equals 0 0.1652. Now let's take up the case when y equals 2. See how that constraint affects the original equation. That's going to be 16 plus 12x squared minus 12x squared plus 12 equals 1. Again, I've just put in y equals 2 as the constraint back into the original equation. And so the x squareds cancel out here. A little unusual. And so I'm left with 28 equals 1, um, which means that there's no solution no value of x can satisfy that equation and therefore there is no y equals 2 case. Okay, so let's move on to part C. And what is challenging admittedly about part C is making sense of the constraints that they're giving us. Okay, we have a line through the origin whose slope is negative 1. That's tangent to the curve at some point. Well, a line through the origin whose slope is negative 1 is the line y equals negative x. And since that intersects the curve at the point of interest, we know that that's a constraint that we can apply to the original equations. So that's one of our constraints we have. that y has to equal negative x 
for any solution. But we have another constraint, and that is that the tangent line has a slope of negative 1. So we can also write that dy dx equals negative 1. So those are the two conditions that we're going to apply to this equation and then the equation for the derivative to simplify them sufficiently to find the particular point in question. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to first rewrite dy dx and that's going to be 4x plus 2x squared. I've substituted y equals negative x for the occurrence of y in the numerator. Similarly, I can rewrite the denominator as 2x squared plus 1. I've substituted again negative x in for y here into the dy dx equation. And that whole thing equals negative 1. Okay, so this is going to substantially simplify our situation. So now I can write that 4x plus 2x squared, I'm multiplying both sides by the denominator, 2x squared plus 1. And since I'm multiplying by negative 1, it just changes the sign here. Okay, well this is just a quadratic equation. I can solve this. Let's put all the terms together. I have 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Solving for x. Uh, x is negative b, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 16, minus 4ac, that's going to be minus 16, all over 2a, it's over 8. So the square root of 16 minus 16, this is going to 0. And so that gives me that, uh, let's see, x equals negative 1 half. Now, how do we find y? Well, we take this x value, we plug it back into the original equation to solve for y. So we're going to get 2y cubed uh, plus 6 fourths, which I'm going to write as 3 halves y, minus 12x squared. Uh, plus, I'm sorry, the 12x squared, we know how to handle. 12x squared is going to be minus 3 uh, plus 6y equals 1. Because this has a, a cubic term in it, I'm going to solve this numerically and then test the result. I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you do the very same thing we did previously over here, namely we put this in as our first equation and then we put this in as our second equation and found the intersection. We're going to put this in as our first equation, put this in as our second equation and find the intersection. The intersection comes out to 0.499999 and so from that we guess that it's really just exactly one half which we can test by putting back in here and seeing that y equals one-half is, in fact, the solution. So point P equals negative one-half, one-half. Again, what's challenging about this problem is not part A, but parts B and C. And the key there is you're going to need to go back to the original equations, both for the derivative as well as the original equation of the curve. You're going to have to apply the constraints they give you to simplify those equations. 
those simplified equations either have um, a straightforward way of being solved numerically or you can solve them uh, by factoring or using the quadratic equation and that's what yields our solutions but again those operations are often long and uh, you know, consist of many steps so it's good to check each step before you proceed on to the next one